Hey, what's up guys? Wanted to make a quick little video to address the 80-20. Things that you as a business owner can do in your day-to-day -day life, week to week, while you're out on the field or wherever you are, uh, certain actions you can take that'll take really little effort but actually moves the needle, okay? Helps a lot, gets a lot of relevance in the search engines going on for the business. So um, they're all gonna be inside the Google My Business dashboard and um, yeah, let's get into it. All right, so as you can see, I'm in my one, and the first thing we're gonna be looking at is posts, right? So Google introduced posts not too long ago in you know mid or towards the end of 2017 actually, right? And basically it's a way for you to give updates of what is going on in the business, um, you know, pretty much week to week, day to day, right? Little things, for example, normally if you're open to, um, let's say until eight o'clock, right? And suddenly something happened and you are only open to six o'clock or something, uh, or something you're changing, anything really, maybe a special event is going on. It was, that's how it was introduced, right? But it can be used for even more um, uh, lower priority things, such as you have a sale, you have some kind of, um, you know, a promotion going on, anything, okay? These posts come up do you, based on relevancy. This is something that Google does not really talk about, but if you're not ranking in the maps, that doesn't mean that your post can never show up. It means that if people are searching around you for something very relevant, there's a chance that this post can show up on their cell phones when they're searching for it if they scroll down enough, right? So it's a way to capture leads even before you have high rankings. So anyways, having that said, what, I would, um, what I'm gonna do is go to the mobile version of, the, of this thing, let me see and show you what that looks like. All right, so I'm on my cell phone, right? This is where you should have this app, right? You just type in Google My Business in Android or um, iPhone, and the first thing that comes up is probably gonna be this app. And what we're gonna be able to do is I'm gonna go through a little, um, you know, just a basic way how you can create a post, right? So on the bottom right, we can see the plus icon, which is gonna bring on two buttons. One is a add photos or create a post. Create a post. Here, you can see that you can first add a picture, right? This picture should be taken by your cell phone while you're out on the field and you have um, data on, right? Basically, you shouldn't be using Wi-Fi because once you have your location on, um, let me see if I can show you what I mean. Let's see. If I go, let's say, um, bagels. It's not gonna come up because I already did it. Anyways, um, basically, you know when you go to a new browser, it shows on the top right, like, do you want to add your location? And you can say yes. That's what Google uses to see where you're actually located. So if your business is in Brooklyn, and if you put that, um, you know, if you take a picture that's taken somewhere in Brooklyn, that's just relevancy right there, straight within from the app to the Google My Business dashboard, right? It's, it can't get any better. So anyways, so I would add a picture here, you know, Let's see what, to, okay, no, I don't have any really good pictures to add right now. But okay, in terms of um, writing a post, this can be anywhere from, you know, uh, two to 300 words. I would write a good amount, but one thing I would recommend is using this in the bottom left, this key right here. This is something I use a lot in my business to create content. Um, it's, it's very accurate, so just you can press it and it writes what you say very accurately compared to the computer they have, right? I have a Mac and the Mac computer is not as accurate as the one on the cell phone. As you can see, I just wrote some stuff here. <laughs> All right, so let me delete that. So let's say you have a good post right there and then you can use these buttons. I would always recommend using both of these buttons. Just make use of them, right? And then click it, add an event title, you know, um, put something and then you, even if it's just one day you have, or, you know, let's say you're out on the field for doing one job, right? I would still put it like, you know, since you're going to do a post anyway, you'd put it from today and then you put a time, like, you know, let's say you're out there at eight o'clock and then you put it later on today and you're done at three o'clock, whatever, anything. It just, it just making use of the use of that section there, right? Each section has its own little relevancy within it, right? So, um, okay. After that, I would add a, button and whatever you want whatever is more relevant you can add one of them and then uh put the put your direct website for most people this is going to be your you know your actual website and sometimes it could be you know maybe if you have a landing page that you have for um, where you want to send appointments but just use one and put your website now this that was pretty simple right now the next part what i want to let you guys know is we should always put links in these slots here right not keep it empty 
So well, give me a second. Let me just um, plug back my computer so I can show you what that looks like. All right, guys, so with me so far, right? It's just creating a basic post. Now, what I want to show you is what are the links you should be showing. Now, when we do it for, you know, when, when the, the, the way to choose what links you want to put, there's a complicated way, which is, can be very accurate. And then there's also a very non-complicated way, but it was almost just as good, okay? And that is this. You just type in your brand name into Google and Google will tell you what they care about. Simple as that, right? Google doesn't have a vested interest in Yelp or Home Advisor or anything. It's just basically whenever you type in your business name, it will tell you in the ranks of which one they think is more relevant for your direct business name. So then you can go ahead and take a few of them, whether it be a citation, a social media, um, a platform. I would start with a few that's um, just right off the bat pretty good. For example, uh, Google Plus, your Maps URL. So let me show you how to get that. For this guy, this would be like, let's say I'm doing New York. Just so you know how to get the maps URL, just go into any maps and type in your business name right here. Okay, there, boom, share. Shorten the link, it's always good to shorten the link. All right, if you take this link and then boom, then you have one. That's your maps URL. Go to Google Plus, on the top of the um, Google Plus, that's the URL that you have, you have your Google, um, Google Plus now, there's two. You can go to your blogger, if you have a blogger account, that's three. If you see the trend, what I'm doing here is I'm first prioritizing Google's own properties. This is Google Maps, Google Plus, and then Blogger. They have something with Blogger as well. So those are things that you know you could always use a lot. On top of that, if you want to diversify, let's say you're doing posts like two, three times a week, like you know you're active, you're killing it. Then what you want to do is also put some of the other stuff, right? Yelp, Home Advisor, BBB. Basically, take your Yelp link, go to Google URL shortener and just paste it here and boom, you have a shortened link. And then you'd save this somewhere on your phone, probably your notes. You'll have like a little thing where you just call it GMB post or something like that. And anytime you want, when you're posting something, just take a couple of the links and sprinkle it in. Maybe you don't even have to, you, you don't even really have to care like which one you put. You don't have to think too much. Just put any of them, get, you know, build up a list of around five to 10, and then you can sprinkle uh, ones over time, the ones that you didn't, you know, next time the ones you missed out, you can do those like that, right? Now, why do we shorten it just to, you know, Hey guys, just to clarify why we shorten the links, because sometimes people are, you know, confused why I'm always suggesting this, but basically it's this, it's very simple. When you're in YouTube, when you're in any social media or any other business out there, you know, online, they don't want you to leave their platform. If you're on Facebook and you click, you know, they, somebody puts a link and it's like a link to YouTube, Facebook doesn't like that. Whatever little algorithm they had to give people relevancy with a ranking boost because of having outbound links, they're not going to provide that for that particular link because they don't like people leaving their platform. It's called source at the link, right? Or at least that's what I call it and the community I'm in mean, calls it. Anyways, basically when we shorten a link, whether that be we are linking out to Yelp or HomeAdvisor, even if even though it's away from Google, it still considers it as Google's own property, at least at the source. Until it gets there, then obviously it knows it's another platform. So as uh, whenever we can, you can shorten any and every link with the Google shortener. And since it's coming from GOO.gl, the, the, the robots that crawl it will always favor it over a normal URL such as www.yelp.com. So just wanted to clarify that overall. All right, guys. So the second thing is just responding to reviews. Okay, this is a very simple thing, but it does have an effect, right? Whenever people leave you a review, you want to go in there as, you know, uh, whenever you get a chance, better to do it quicker than later um, and respond, right? Google actually has an algorithm that shows them how quickly you respond. It's, it's, an, it's a part of being active in the community for people who are, you know, who are your customers. Anyways, not, not only do we want to respond. So for example, this guy wrote something nice. What I can do is when I'm responding, when I, I should try to put in a few keywords that's relevant to my business, whether it be location or niche, right? So he said something nice. I could be like, hey, thank you, Daniel. I mean, let's say I'm a roofer, right? Uh, and somebody says something like, hey, the, the, thank you for being so great. We didn't even have to be home. Everything was clean when we got there and the roof installation was, was done perfectly. The reply could be something like, thank you for your kind words, Daniel. Um, we strive to be one of the best uh, shingle installation companies in Brooklyn. Right? If they talk about shingles, you can talk about shingles. 
it, you don't have to stuff it. You don't have to go out of your way to put too much. I see sometimes businesses do that. It looks very, um, you know, obvious and a little awkward also to the person who, because, you know, they get alert that you re reply. But <laughs> other than that, whenever possible, you know, you definitely want to reply. That's number one. But whenever possible, you could put in a few keywords that's relevant to us. And that plays a role in the algorithm as well. We know this also because, you know, there's proof when we go out there and you can check out reviews of certain businesses, you see the algorithm actually goes out and highlights what it thinks is is natural. I mean, not natural, uh, relevant. Relevant to, the, to a bagel shop right here. See service, place, breakfast, hangout. It goes pretty far into thinking what is relevant, you see? These are not, these people didn't come in and bold the sentences. This is the algorithm highlighting that. And you can actually see it sometimes, you know, if you're on your cell phone and you're looking for the businesses, you'll see some parts are highlighted. Basically, the algorithm found out that these are relevant to a bagel shop. So that's where that comes in. All right, moving on to the next one. The second last thing is photos. This has been one of the most, you know, it's, it's, it's been there since GMB was introduced. It's always been great. Uh, minimum would be two to three a month, I would say. Uh, at least one a month, that, that's at the absolute minimum. You should just upload it right from your phone. But um, there's no maximum, right? The more you can, the better. In the beginning, our priority should be to fill out every single slot, right? People often forget about these areas here, interior, exterior. So fill those out to at least four pictures, the first row. Okay, for four of them in the first row, right from your cell phone is fine. Once you filled all of them out and try to make it irrelevant if you can, like, you know, like for example, for me with team, I have like pictures of like not teams. These are just images. That's not the best way, but you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't try too hard to rank my own, um, own GMB, but anyways, try to make it relevant, but it doesn't have to be hundred percent. It can be just close. And once you fill it up with three, four, um, uh, pictures, then we can just go to overview and just add pictures on an um, you know continuous basis. It's like I said, it's a very simple thing, but a lot of times people oversee it. But pictures is a big part. If you go to insights, you see there's a whole section just for photos and how people are interacting with their photos. Google cares about this stuff. So yeah, last thing guys is just turning on your messages. Okay, this is the fourth thing. This is one, two, three, four, five, the sixth slot right here, messaging. And what you want to do is put a welcome message. This will be given to the homeowner when they are coming to your, um, you know, listing and they're trying to interact with it, uh, or you know, they're trying to message it right off, right from there. They'll be given this message, and then you'll get an alert live while they're there. So this is, you know, it's not used as much as they it should be, but this is a great thing, right? If you have this on, homeowners when they're searching for your services right then and there, they can interact with you and it'll come up on your cell phone when you have the app right and um yeah so you know just put your phone number this should be the same number that is put on your business listing and um yeah guys that concludes this video overall you know four things most important posts in today's day have your pictures filled up reply to your reviews and then um you know then have messaging on it's a very simple thing you can do it just takes a little bit of habit and you know um takes a little bit of talking to yourself to let you know that hey this is you know just something i can get used to and then it'll um forever help my business for the for the long run and um we can we can you know start putting some energy towards there thank you for watching